permeate the darkness, God, um, and that you would bring people hope, God, and uh, just the hope that we have from new life uh, that you give us, Lord. So um, help us to lean into that. God, we lift up um, just the people in our lives that are sick right now. Uh, God, many of them um, listening right now, um, but also some others, Lord. Um, people, we have parents that perhaps we're concerned about that uh, we don't want them to get this, and, and we don't want, um, we're afraid of what this could mean for them. Uh, Lord, would you would you calm our fears uh, with that? And Lord, we just we ask that you would be protecting around them, uh, Lord, that you would uh, be delivering them from this sickness, um, God, and delivering them from um, just fear uh, as well. Uh, we have no need to fear, God. Um, but just thank you for your goodness there, Lord. And uh, we pray for wisdom for our leadership, uh, for our government officials, Lord, people who are making these choices. I thank you for the caution um, that we are taking, uh, Lord, the preventative measures. I think these are good things. Um, God, just help us to keep balance, Lord. But um, we just thank you for those things. And we continue to lean into you, Lord. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, all right, guys. Well, um, is there, we got anything else? I don't think so for now. Okay. Well, I, I have some words I want to share with you guys this morning. Uh, I believe they're really, really good words. Um, just something to, uh, encourage you. Uh, actually I was planning on sharing something completely different. You know, I mean, here we are, uh, in the church year, it's the season of Lent. Um, where um, it's it's just this journey that we are on, where we're where we're telling the the story of God um, and recognizing our place in that, and uh, just kind of turning back to Him and uh, repentance and hope and new life and uh, just really really good things. Um, today though, like the thing that's been on my mind um, is a different scripture, and so uh, yesterday I kind of took a different path, um, but if. if if I could just, I don't know, think about this. If you could measure your peace right now, where would it be? Um, if you could measure your peace, like on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, where might that be for you? Now, I know like we all kind of define peace a little differently. Um, you know, there's lots of different definitions. Um, but where would you kind of rate yourself? there one to ten you can post it or not doesn't matter i think we just need to consider that uh, i think it's a good question for us right now um we we kind of think sometimes peace is peace is this some far off elusive concept right like uh we might think of it as something that's that we gotta take by force um or something you have to work for something that you have to, to take hold of you might see peace as something that you will have when you finally iron out all the creases in your life. Um, when you uh, get your act to get together, you know, when those, all those ducks finally get in that row, but they just keep moving, right? They're elusive. Um, uh, or, or maybe like you think of peace when you resolve certain issues. Um, maybe it's something you get when, when you think like, like those barriers, you, have, you can identify certain barriers, certain things that are withholding peace in your life. Um, maybe we think if I could just get rid of those, then man, I'm going to be, I'm going to be good. Um, when your when your problems are resolved, uh, you know, a lot of our problems sometimes have a face, you know, it's a, it's a person and we think, man, if I could just, if that person would just kind of fall in line or move away, uh, I don't know what it is that you're thinking, but we like to define peace as this absence of conflict. Um, I saw a bumper sticker at some point and it said, no Jesus, no peace. And it was N-O, right? No Jesus, no peace. And then uh, below it, it said, no Jesus, no peace, which was K-N-O-W, Jesus, no peace. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I know in my own life, um, that proves to be true. Um, that's something that I look at and I can see the before and the after, uh, and the difference that is made. Um, so I see it as true. Um, we derive peace from our God. Um, we can be a child of God, though, uh, and still have no peace. 
we can be full of angst. We can be full of unrest. And there can be this disconnect between who we know God to be and how we live, um, where we kind of just fall out of alignment. Um, I've been there too. Um, sometimes an event happens that, that kind of puts us on a path of unrest, uh, a change, a hardship, um, a crisis that detours us. Sometimes it's, it's even like just apathy or, or distraction. But at some point, um, I don't know if you can identify this in your own life along with me, where um, crisis has, has detoured us. Um, and I don't know, maybe you've been feeling like this last week, this, this imbalance uh, is when it comes to peace. Um, or, or maybe like this kind of tug of war pulling in one direction or, or another. Um, and and I, I've been feeling that myself, you know, um, as, it's, as I care for more than just myself. I got my family uh, that I want to provide for and, and measures I want to take to make sure everybody's cared for. Uh, you know, there's, there's um, perceived threats that are out there, and perhaps uh, we all see those a little bit differently. But I think the reality is, is that life can be overwhelming at times. Um, it can. Uh, and worry, worry can follow us wherever we go. Um, but I think that our God wants to lead us into peace. And so... That's why I have some words for you. Um, they're not my words. Uh, they're the words of King David. It's in Psalm 23. Um, now, this is like one of the most well-known passages of Scripture uh, that's out there. Um, and it's sometimes it's something that is so well-known can be neglected and overlooked. Um, did you know like one of the most high-risk places where you're driving Um when you're driving, like when you're more prone to get into a car accident is the closer you are to home. Um, it's because you let your guard down because things are just, you expect them to be a certain way. And sometimes I feel like we view scripture in that way, especially some real familiar things to us, things that we've heard again and again and again. Um, they can just be neglected and overlooked. They could fade into the background. We can, we cannot be real interested in what is happening. Um, we can do that. Um, or we could even think that we just know something so well that we don't need to, to look at it in a new way. Or there's nothing new that I'm going to gain from it. But I just want to encourage you, if we could look at this and think about this in these next few moments um, and resist that urge, I think we're going to find something really cool. Um, and so I don't know if you guys have a Bible at home or um, you probably don't. Like if you open up an app, you may jump out of, out of this program. But... Um, yeah, uh, find something, uh, or just listen, I'm going to be reading that too. It's, it's Psalm 23. Um, hold on. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Psalm 23 begins with, the Lord is my shepherd, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, um, uh, some versions say, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing, or I have all I need. Uh, in other words, what's being said there is like, um, there is no need to worry if God is my shepherd. Um, like that's a, that's a good concept, isn't it? Isn't that like a really nice thought? Like if God is our shepherd, we don't need to worry. But I don't know about you, uh, sometimes I hear those things and I ask questions like, well, does that really hold up? Like, is that, is that, is that true? Um, does, and so I guess that's a good question maybe for us to ask ourselves. Does that hold up in our lives? Um, is that true in, in our lives? Is that true in how we live? Um, that, that if God is our shepherd, we don't need to worry. Um, you know, if, if I could translate that, uh, translate that to something recent and relevant, uh, it might be this. It might say, like, if God is my shepherd, then I don't need a wall of toilet paper in my house. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't need like 12 packages of, uh, a 24 pack. Um, wait a second. It just said that my wife is watching this and she's behind me. So, um, oh. it says Chris De, Kristen DeGrosler is watching and you're right here. Um, it's like, how did you know? Yeah. 
This is how we do it, guys. Um, <laughs> welcome to my life. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, uh, there's a statement for you. You know, if the Lord is my shepherd, perhaps, perhaps I don't need to make, you know, that extra trip to Walmart today. Um, perhaps, um, I don't know. Yeah, creepy. Uh, so, uh, we have a shepherd. Uh, that's, that's what we're told right there. We're like, we have a shepherd. And here's the thing. He, he shepherds us. He leads us wherever we go. That's the picture we get in these first three verses of Psalm 23. It's, it's a shepherd leading his sheep. It's a picture of how God leads his people. Um, you know, if, if you're looking at the Bible, at a Bible, you might see the words um, right above this passage that says, a, a Psalm of David, right? That's, that's kind of what's scribed there, a Psalm of David. David. Uh, we're given a, an indication of the musician that penned these lyrics, right? Um, and, and really, that's kind of what this is, is it's uh, what Psalms is, is it's like a hymn book for the people of Israel, um, these are songs uh, that they sing again and again and again. These are the very things that they hit the repeat button and they're like, let's let this uh, shape us. Uh, and that's really what we want from this too, uh, is for us to hit that repeat button and say, God, shape me with this, shape me with this. Uh, and I think right now we could really, really use that. Um, but David, maybe you know him from his battle with Goliath. Um, you know, or, or you remember him as, as the king of Israel, or maybe you're familiar with his downfall with Bathsheba. Um, yeah, there was that, that one time. Uh, and, but, but before all those things, David was a shepherd. Um, pretty neat, you know. Uh, shepherding in those times wasn't just like this job that you do. It was a lifestyle. A shepherd would live in the fields with with the sheep. He would he would lead them, and it wasn't just letting them out of the gate every morning to go to the bathroom, and then them come right back on in, like kind of what we do with our dog in the morning. Um, the shepherd had to give his life over to protecting, to caring for, to leading these sheep. Um, and if you're not familiar with with sheep, uh, they are not the smartest creatures in the world. Um, they aren't. Um, you know, they, they might eat the food beneath them, uh, all the grass beneath them and have bare ground and starve, failing to realize that 10 feet over is uh, another patch of grass, uh, right? Uh, so they're not, they're not like the smartest uh, of creatures. Uh, that might be an exaggeration. But um, it, it means something, though. Like, it means that you and I need a shepherd. Um, we, we find that to be especially true in certain times, don't we? Um, like right now with all of the uncertainty in the world, with uh, how everybody is freaking out. Uh, we're getting that message that comes to us loud and clear, whether we're, people are actually saying it or not. We see the actions that people are taking, and we, we can deduce from that fear. Um, that's what's happening in the world around us. Um, but it just makes me wonder, where would we be? without a shepherd in times like this, right? I mean, I'll tell you, we'd be at home hiding in our toilet paper igloo. Um, that's where we would be. Um, the shepherd, he goes before us. He knows what is good for the sheep, even when they don't know it themselves. Um, and just as a shepherd leads his sheep, God leads his people. Uh, verse 2 says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. I mean, he knows exactly what they need and, and leads them to it. Um, man, I, I don't know about you, but when I think about that, I get this picture of confidence. Um, like a, a shepherd finding perfect provision, rest and refreshment, good guidance and right direction. It's a picture that gives confidence. You know, he, he can do these things and will do these things. And, and, and the sheep can trust, can trust the shepherd. I mean, he knows what is good, which says that we, as his people, are in good hands. Do yes. um, you ever try to carry the weight of your own future, right? Um, or the future of your family? It just, 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 or the world, right? <laughs> like, like, like we can actually do something about that. Um, uh, ever try to carry the weight of the future on your own? 
you try to put all the pieces together uh, just right, that, that things will work out with family, with friends, with, with a job, with finances. I mean, that's a lot of weight to carry. Um, those are the kind of things that will keep you up at night, uh, won't they? Um, maybe you've been kept up uh, at night with some of those things too. Um, the psalmist calls us to turn to the shepherd, though. Um, you know, we, we can feel helpless. We can feel burdened. Um, and worry can, can, can be cultivated in us, right? It just turns over and over and over. It's, we just roll around and worry. Um, that can happen. But you and I are called to turn to the shepherd. Um, and the shepherd knows, right? I mean, the shepherd knows. He, the shepherd knows your needs. The shepherd comes and the shepherd rescues us. And, and verse 3 says this, says this, says, says, He restores my soul. He guides me along paths of righteousness for his name's sake, right? Um, for his name's sake. Uh, yeah, his name. I, I don't know. One of the things I, that I think about, too, is I think about, like, s- sports, um, where you have... Um, a coach and you have a team and the coach is usually right there on the sidelines and giving them, telling them everything, what to do and where to go. And he's really just giving them encouragement um, and direction uh, and, and exactly what they need in the moments that they need it. You know, that's kind of some of the picture that I think is being painted here. But uh, one of the other things that I, I consider too is like when at the end of the game, you know, uh, what happens at the end of the game uh, I mean, victory is won. Uh, let's let's go with those times. Uh, and I don't know if you've ever seen. I'm sure you have. Uh, like in football, where they pick up the big the big uh, container of of Gatorade or whatever it is, and they dump it all over the coach. I mean, it's like, well, why did why did they do that? I mean, they're the ones that did it, right? They're they're the ones. The team is the one who 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 did it. Um, but really, when they're taking that and they're dumping that on their coach, they're really honoring their coach. You know, they're saying they're they're acknowledging where they are um, because of him and because of his his leadership and because of his presence and because of all those things and 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 really they're they're dumping that on him and and really they're just dousing him with glory right um, and and that's what we're talking about when we talk about for his name's sake um, is that is that we are giving all the glory to God and we're recognizing that God does all these good things and he puts them on display in our life and it is him that gets the glory for that. Um, it's good. It's good stuff. But God doesn't just go before us and lead us like a coach. He doesn't just stay on the sidelines and call the shots saying, go, 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 be salt and light. Uh, he doesn't just send us out to stay on the sidelines he gets in the game with us, All right? And that's exactly what verse 4 says. It says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Um, as a shepherd goes before us, he leads us, he provides for us, uh, like a coach on the sidelines, but he doesn't stay on the sidelines. He gets in the game. He walks with us, even through the darkest valley. Uh, you and I know that the Lord's provision in our lives is not only green pastures and still waters. I mean, wouldn't that be nice? Um, yes, it would just, let me just lay in the green pastures and eat, right? Bring me to those still waters. Um, we walk through the valley at times. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I mean, life isn't always refreshment. There are hard seasons, um, like now. Um, And as we walk amidst those shadows, we find the shepherd there leading us. Um, Yeah, we have so many reasons to fear out there. Um, So many reasons. But we only need one reason to not fear, and that's the Lord. That's that he walks with us. He doesn't leave us alone. Um, I recognize that when we do something on the internet like this, a lot of people might hear it. 
um, a lot of people from different avenues and backgrounds. And uh, let me tell you, this is a huge promise. Um, and it's not something that's just made to me. And it's not made to qualified people, you know, uh, people who have met the prerequisites. You know, this is something that God offers to all people. His presence. Um, all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yeah, yeah, amen. Um, we we here we find this amazing promise. Um, God is with His people, I mean, and that's what sets Christianity apart from all, a lot of other beliefs. You know, a lot of other religions, faiths. Um, it, it's not a God who is distant, but a God who is present. A God who is with his people, right? Who came to us in Jesus. Um, we, the same picture we get in Matthew 28, right? When Jesus says to his disciples, he says, Go into all the nations, uh, making disciples, go, go making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And what does he say? And surely I am with you. I'm always with you, even to the very end of the age. He's not on the sidelines. He's in the game with us. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we can fear no evil. We don't need to give in to fear and worry because our shepherd is with us. Um, I have another picture for you, too. I don't know if you're familiar with the story of the people of Israel, um, but God had, had rescued them out of Egypt. He had freed them from that slavery. And then he, then on Mount Sinai, God delivers his law to his people. These would be those Ten Commandments that you've been hearing about, right? Um, Moses, he came down from the mountain uh, carrying these Ten Commandments that were written by the hand of God. Um, and, and, and what are people doing? Um, they had, they had uh, melted gold. Uh, and they had formed this golden calf, and they were worshiping a god, lowercase g, right? And not just any god, a god who was distant, a god who didn't talk to them, a god who didn't communicate with them. And, and they were worshiping this calf, and God is, is angry. And Moses kind of takes on this intercessor role in this exchange. And in Exodus 33, Moses is talking with God about the people and says this in verse 15. He says this, Unless you go with us, we will not go from here. Um, unless your presence is with us, we're done. Um, and Moses pleads with God not to take his presence from them. Uh, because unless the Lord walks with us, we're lost. Um, it reminds me of that other scripture, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. You know, I don't want to do anything apart from God's presence. Um, I don't. I don't want to move without him. Um, yeah. Um, and Because unless the Lord walks with us, we're lost. We're left to provide for ourselves. And, and let me tell you, um, you know, this whole picture of shepherd and sheep uh, and us saying sheep are dumb, uh, we're the sheep. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that's the other part of it is we're the sheep. And, and sometimes we really, well, most of the time, we really don't know what it is that we actually need. We need a shepherd to lead us. And left to ourselves, we're gonna we're going to get caught in the thicket Right, I mean, we're gonna be vulnerable, um, and 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 we we need a shepherd, um, we need a provider, we need a leader, we need a protector. And this is the promise we have in Jesus that God walks with us. It's the promise that David claims: the Lord is our shepherd. Not just that He walks with us to provide for us, but He also walks with us to to comfort us. So that when we're walking amidst the shadows, we have a shepherd with us. I mean, yeah, sheep can be afraid of their own shadow even, right? Um, we can be afraid of our own shadow. Um, who, who is it that walks with you in the deepest valley? Um, when my daughter was diagnosed, when our daughter was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, um, it turned our lives upside down. Uh, and we had a lot of shadows to be afraid of. 
um, we did. Uh, there was so many gray areas where we just couldn't control. Uh, there was lots of uncertainty. You know, what would happen if we didn't catch a blood sugar low? How do you know what her blood sugar is just by looking at her? There's no possible way to, to be able to tell those things. You know, um, what if we give too much insulin? I mean, there was just so much information for us to download. And God has made our bodies so complex, it's hard to understand at times. Um, but there's lots of fear and insecurity that we had. Um, and, and there's this like emergency feeling that you get, um, which probably a lot of parents maybe are feeling um, in these days. Or, or those of us just with loved ones that we want to look out for. We're like, well, I can't, I can't quite control this. And, and it's like every, there's all this, all this panic that's happening in the world around us. What do I do? I remember... Um, uh, a doctor coming and talking to us and they're saying, you know, right now you're, you're on high alert, you know, um, the DEFCON level is high for you right now. You, you're, you're an emergency uh, protocol, right, as you're feeling. And they said, don't worry, you'll get used to it. <laughs> not like that'll go away. Um, not like there's going to come a time when, when you, you won't have these issues to deal with. Just you're you're going to get used to it. Um, and I got to tell you, that was not the, the, what we were hoping to hear. Um, it wasn't. Um, but it was going to become the new normal. See, this was a time when we needed a shepherd to lead us, um, who knows our need, who provides and protects, who, who, and we followed him. We followed him. Um, and I got to tell you, um, we learned so much. Um, we learned a lot about ourselves. Um, we learned a lot about our daughter. We learned a lot about type 1 diabetes. Um, but we, we learned. Um, we also learned to stay close to the shepherd. Uh, we also learned how faithful he is. Uh, we also learned that uh, we needed to trust him with the things that we couldn't control and even the things that we could control. We learned to depend upon him. We were a sheep that learned his voice even more. Um, and, 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 and it was good. Um, and we're still there, right? I mean, like this situation hasn't changed for us um, until the Lord heals my daughter uh, or doesn't. Um, we're still going to depend upon him. We're, we're still going to lean into him. Um, but yeah, um, we followed him. Uh, and here's the cool thing about our God is he knows where all the pieces go. Like that's what we felt. We felt like our life just fell apart. Uh, but he knows where all the pieces go, right? That's, that's a picture of peace that's actually in scripture. It's not one of removing things. Of, of getting getting rid of all of the all the conflict in your life, but it's one of putting the pieces back to where they belong, right? It's one of one of wholeness, um, and that's something that that we have experienced, um, and that's something that we continue to lean in the Lord for to receive, and I think that's something that God wants to give each and every one of you as well. Um, yeah, um, it's not a absence or of conflict it's not an absence of hardship but it's presence um, see we need a shepherd all the time but we especially realize it when our world is turned upside down uh, in those moments of need that we have the unique opportunity to experience God's presence um, a peace that, that realizes that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can fear no evil, for you are with me. Um, so the Lord goes before us to provide for us. Uh, he walks with us to comfort us. And not only that, but the promises of God, they pursue us. Um, that's what you read in verse 5. It says this, says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness, your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Um, man, whew. take a deep breath, right? Uh, receive those words today. 
See, David, he's no longer thinking about green pastures and the sheep. He's thinking about the future, right? He's, he's preparing a table. Um, God is preparing a table. Um, and like us, I'm sure David has this level of uncertainty as he would look into the future. Uh, he doesn't have the full picture of what's going to happen next, but he knows that he can count on the Lord's provision. The Lord will provide a meal for me in the face of adversity. He will be with me at the table. Right? There's a perspective that, 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 that David is embracing here. Um, a picture of hope and a future. Right? Here's the thing. Anticipate that. Right? What if, what if we were to anticipate that? Of all the things that you're thinking about and that this last week has caused you to think about and question and wonder and all those pieces that need to come into play in order for you to feel like you're going to have peace. What if you anticipated that? You know, God's hope and future. Yeah. That He is present. You know, I have a very strategic mind. Um, I'm a problem solver, right? Sometimes to a fault, I'm a problem solver. Um, you stop nodding and you just smiled. That's probably a good thing. Um, but uh, I, find, I find avenues uh, forward that work. Um, all that means I'm continually analyzing a situation and I'm always weighing options. It's actually kind of exhausting at times. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we all... <laughs> She's like, yeah, it's it's exhausting at times. It is. Um, uh, I, I'm I'm sure we're all doing that to an extent, though, right now, right? Um, and, and I don't know. Maybe you feel like somebody just kind of hit that repeat button um, in your mind, and now you just can't turn it off. Um, what this psalm does is it challenges us. What it challenges us to do is to make your shepherd the greatest factor in all of your equations, yes. right? Yes. That's it, right there. Um, when it comes to your money, when it comes to your pantry, when it comes to if you're going to get, you know, some sickness or not, um, whatever it is, it, it means to make make your shepherd the greatest factor in all of those equations. Um, and, and really, like, that's what we want to give you today. We want to we wanna give you some words that represent a very real God. Um, that he is our shepherd. Um, yeah. Let me read this one more time for you. Um, and, and we'll pray. Um, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me along paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death or the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's good stuff, right? That's great. Um, God has given that to you. He's given that to me. Um, would you listen for the shepherd this week? Um, would you listen for him more than anything else? Maybe one of the best things that you could do uh, this week is to turn off your TV, you know, uh, or to sign off from Facebook um, and and listen to him. You know, I, I know in my family we've committed these words to memory. Um, we've done that with our kids. Uh, and the neat thing is, is once you do that, um, then you're giving the Lord something that kind of brings up that could speak into your life at any given time. You know, it, it's not just committed to memory, it's written on a heart. Um, and that's what we want. Um, and that's what I want for, for you. Um, and so uh, let me pray. Let me pray for you. Um, let us pray for you. And uh, yeah, Heavenly Father, uh, God, I thank you for your good words. I thank you, Lord, for being our shepherd. Um, and we confess to you, man, we need a shepherd at times. Uh, God, we confess to you that sometimes we kind of circle ourselves and, and create a rut. 
uh, God, um, sometimes uh, we just feel like we don't know what to do. Um, and you know our needs. I mean, that's what this tells us. You know our needs. You want to lead us to green pastures. You want to lead us to places that can fill us up, Lord. Uh, and really, you are the one who fills us up. You are the one who restores our soul. And so, God, my prayer is that this would, um, this, this conversation, uh, these words, your scripture, uh, would restore souls right now, uh, God. Uh, would be the green pastures that they can lay in um, and they can find rest in, God. Would be the reminder that even though people don't know what is going to happen tomorrow and maybe there's a whole lot of unfinished things in their lives, uh, maybe they feel like a lot of things are hanging in the balance because they have to stay home from work or whatever it is, God, that you are there. Um, Lord, that you are their protector, that you are their provider, um, God. And so I ask that you would just help us to anticipate your presence. God, it's not a pass for us to just kind of sit back and say, all right, God's going to figure everything out because it is a cooperative work, Lord. And so, but would you just help us to hear your voice clearly, um, to be able to identify that amidst um, everything else that is kind of being, all, all the other news that's being sold right now and given um, and pushed in our world today. Help us to listen to the good news, uh, God, to remind ourselves of what is true and who is constant in our lives. Uh, but Lord, thank you for walking with us, Lord. Um, and maybe there's some folks that this is kind of a new concept to. Lord, I just ask that you um, would continue to speak to our hearts, uh, Lord. Convince us of what is true, uh, Lord. Um, that isn't something... Um, that we are left up to figure out on our own. It's something that you reveal to us and give to us. And so, Lord, I just ask that you continue that work too. But um, be with us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, you guys. Well, um, I hope you're encouraged. That's really what we want. Um, we just sat down and prayed, God, send your word out to your people today. Um, and... Um, yeah, so you got anything you want to say? <clears throat> I was praying with a friend over the phone yesterday and uh, just kind of an image came in my mind at the end of my prayer <clears throat> that I prayed for her is that in this time and really in any time, I would rather hold God's hand and trust him and follow him in the dark <clears throat> than to be in the light where I can see everything and everything is totally illuminated and I can expect what's going to happen. I would rather be in the dark with Jesus any day, any moment. And so I feel that this message about the shepherd, let's, let's cling to him for our dear lives. Like we never have before. He is the one that we can hold on to. He is our rock. He is our fortress. And, um, he's gonna, he's gonna see us through. He's gonna see you through. So um, let's not be strangers on here. Thanks for everybody for chiming in and yeah. for, um, it's just, it's so cool. I, it's interesting, isn't it? How I feel like I've been a little bit convicted to maybe spend less time on social media in the last few weeks and just really focus on what I need to do, like in real life. <laughs> Well, the tables are kind of turned now, and it, I'm so thankful for the avenue of this connection that we have, and I want to use it for these good things, to yeah. encourage each other, and to uh, just stay connected, and still do interesting things that we can enjoy together, yeah. such as this. So, uh, we love you all. Thank you for taking the time to check in today, and... We hope and pray be encouraged and inspired and um, we'll check up on you as um, as you come to mind and heart but know mm. that we're praying for you and if there is anything specific that you know you need some prayer for whatever please don't hesitate to message us or give us a call um, yeah yeah but and, we love uh, you. just oh. I want to encourage you guys to to uh, just check in on people right check in on people call people text people um, and, uh, you know, if there's a way that we could be praying for you, Kristen and I are doing this regularly. Uh, we're lifting everybody up, um, and check back in with us. Uh, we're trying to kind of amp up, 
um, some of the things that we uh, do together in this in the coming weeks um, and and just some interactive things like I'm, I'm thinking Wednesdays uh, I might do this again just for a simple little kind of conversation devotion uh, surrounding some like the Psalms like maybe the Psalms of Ascents um, but uh, let's see Ray saying let's be diligent to watch out and help others in this time and there are real ways we can help community our community absolutely uh, for instance, like if you have someone who has compromised health or they're in the high risk category, maybe you might suggest, hey, can I go to the store for you? Um, can I go pick up your meds for you uh, or take them with, you know, go with them? I don't know. Uh, we don't want to compromise their health, but um, with being around others. But I, I just think caution is good. Fear, not needed. Um, we're just being cautious, you know, um, but yeah, and then uh, feel free to message us, um, and yeah, we'll do we'll do some more updates here. Um, but just care about you. So, all right, we're gonna turn this thing off. But love you guys, and God bless you. All right, love you. Bye bye.